Hello and welcome to the Ministry of Bridges channel. The fourth estuary displays a remarkable three centuries, three bridges. The 19th century, the Fort Rail Bridge. The 20th century, the Fort Road Bridge. And the 21st century, the Queen's Ferry Crossing. My name is Gabriel Neves, and this is the Fort Road Bridge. Enjoy! Before the Fort Road Bridge opened in 1964, the only way to cross the Firth of the Fort River was by ferry or by train, using the, by then, 74 years old Fort Rail Bridge. Nearly one million vehicles were crossing the Fort Estuary via ferry each year. The story of the Fort Rail Bridge has been covered on the Ministry of Bridges special, the episode number two. The story of the Fort Crossing started way before, back in 1929, work to investigate suitable sites for the road bridge began. There was a growing demand for a road crossing in this area. Every produced proposal never saw approval from the politicians of that time. As a curiosity, a tunnel solution proposed in 1955 was dismissed as it was a very expensive and too ambitious project. Really? Too ambitious? Nothing is too ambitious for the ingenuity of the Scots. Ministry of Bridges stick to the fact it was an expensive solution. That simple. At last, by Act of UK Parliament in 1947, approved the location for the bridge and the Fort Road Bridge Joint Board was established. This board would oversee the construction of the bridge that would be replacing the 800 years old ferry service. Yet, the work continued to be delayed. Ten years later, in 1957, the design model was shown in Edinburgh for the first time. This bridge would become the fourth longest suspension bridge in the world. To put things into perspective, by the time, great suspension bridges were being built in the United States. That was a trend to long crossings. Do you know which bridges I am referring to? At last, in 1958, 35 years after J. Inglés Kerr, motoring author and journalist, that is considered the father of the idea of a must-needed road crossing near South Queen's Ferry, the go-ahead for construction was given. Better later and well made than never, right? The design and supervision of the construction of the Fort Road Bridge was responsibility of the biggest consultant engineers firms in the UK. Freeman Fox and Partners, in joint venture with Merce, Mott and Hay Anderson. After all, the fourth longest suspension bridge in the world was going to be designed and built. If the top consultants were brought in, what to say about the contractors? Top leading construction companies in Britain, Sir William Arrow and Company, the Cleveland Bridge and Engineering Company, and Dorman Long Limited. Together, they formed the ACD Bridge Company Limited. What does a red telephone kiosk have to do with the Fort Road Bridge? Well, the red K2 K4 telephone kiosks were designed by the man who would become the consulting architect for the Fort Road Bridge, Sir Giles Gilbert Scott, 1880-1960. Sadly, he didn't live to see it finished. The cost estimate was just over 15 million. 15 million and 100,000 pounds to be precise. And now this, 
there was a provisional contract of 3.17 million to build the northern approach roads, which included two 300 meter long tunnels, 10 concrete bridges, 1800 long viaduct, dual carriageway and connection roads. Well, you can search for the tunnel. There is no tunnel, just massive cuts through the fairy hills of the North Shore. Valo engineering at its best. And what to say about the precision of the construction? With remarkable precision, when the north and south deck girders were swung into place in 1963, the two halves of the bridge were no more than 13 millimeters, one inch out of line. Perfect for the time. John Rowling, spinning parallel wire technique used on the Manhattan Bridge in New York City and San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge was used in the Fort Road Bridge too. To build the strength, the cables were spinned back and forth across the estuary. Lead protective paint was used prior application of the final paint. The bridge two enormous cables, made of steel wires, is enough to circumnavigate the globe 1.25 times, a staggering 30,000 miles long, 11,618 individual 5 mm diameter high tensile steel wires packed in a bundle of 59 cm thick made each main cable. The load passes to the ground by its two main cables that sit on saddles at the summit of the towers. 13.8 thousand tons of load in each cable needed a solid anchorage system. These are made of 56 to 79 meters of concrete casting tunnels of tapering section cut at 30 degrees inclination into the rock at each end. And for the steel hangers, the number is 768. These have 57 mm diameter on each side span and 48 mm diameter on the main span. As a curiosity, the shortest hanger is 2.4 meters long. The suspended deck is made up of steel stiffening trusses. The aerodynamic stability of the structure is achieved by three longitudinal air gaps at the roadway level. Smart. Orthotropic stiffened steel plate makes the main span deck, while on the side spans is 225 mm thick reinforcement concrete slab on steel beams. Believe it or not, on all suspended spans, the surface thickness is no higher than 38 mm. Leave to you to think about the reason for that. One more unique feature of this bridge is that the main expansion joints embedded underneath the two main towers are the oldest and largest in Europe. The two main towers exhibit the St. Andrew's Cross cross bracing and support the majority of the weight of the suspended span. With 156 meters above mean water level, its welded cellular high tensile steel is made of no more than 25 millimeters thickness. The Macintosh Rock was the ideal placement for the North Tower, while the South Tower foundations sit at a staggering 32 meters below high water level. If you watched the Fort Bridge Ministry of Bridges special episode, you are now guessing that caissons filled with compressed air method was used on this foundation as well. The cables carry a total weight of 16,000 tons that is distributed down through the North and South Towers. Not so in focus, but playing an important role in supporting the weight of the main cables as well as the approach viaducts are the side towers. Massive concrete structures on each extreme of the bridge. This bridge has a main span of 1,006 meters between both main towers and 408 meters between the main towers and the side towers. The South Viaduct is 438 meters long and is supported by 10 concrete piers and a side tower, while the North Viaduct 
is 256 meters long. This one is designed to flex with the structure. Next, some bridge numbers for the bridge nerd in you. Do you still remember the cost estimate? No, I will be showing it again. 15 million and 100,000 pounds. I'm giving you 10 seconds for you to guess the real cost of this bridge. The total cost in 1964 was 18 million and 500,000 pounds. Just 29% deviation. Ministry of Bridges thinks it is not bad at all taking into account that it was a brand new technique. Anyway, many of our infrastructure projects nowadays are deviating from the target much more than that, unless Bridges Information Modeling is used. The Fort Road Bridge was opened by Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II on the 4th of September 1964. A tribute to the fifth of the fourth ferry crossing. The last ferry navigated in 1964, the eve of the opening of the bridge. 800 years of continuous crossing is a remarkable achievement. Once again, the fifth of the fourth displayed an engineering marvel that made Brits in general and Scots in particular proud. It was the first bridge of its kind in the UK, the fourth longest in the world, and the longest outside the United States. Impressive. It's all for now, British people. See you next week, and have a brimmer day.